Hello and welcome. Hello and welcome to Engineer Simple. In this video, so this is part three on transformer testing, zero sequence impedance, and part three is on delta grounded Y. So just kind of a reminder. So part one was on if you have a grounded Y, a grounded Y and you have a delta, stabilizing winding or a buried delta. So part two, it was on a grounded Y, a grounded Y, but there is no delta. So part three, it will be, so basically you have a delta, high side for instance, and a grounded Y, low side. So following is a, a calculation example for of zero sequence impedance of T model of a three phase three leg core transformer connected to Y eleven sorry eleven MVA thirty four kV delta twelve kV grounded Y. So some notations. This is just a uh, kind of a repeat from previous videos. Just for a reminder. So the high side of 34 kV in this case is H, 12 kV is X. Some may call it L instead of X. Just keep that in mind. They mean the same thing. So the zero sequence impedance base is the MVA of the excited winding. So in this case, both high and low side are 11 MVA. So that will be the base MVA. Note that the tank acts like a phantom delta. So kind of what if you have that delta, if you don't if you have if you don't have a delta, just keep in mind sometimes you might hear the, the words phantom delta. So meaning the tank, you know, acting like a, a phantom delta. So the T model, so this so if you have so here's the Y side. Because the Y is connected to the ground, to the neutral, or to the ground, the high side, since it's it has no neutral, so it has no access to ground. That's why we show it as an open. So dur during the zero sequence test, only one test is performed. That's because you have one grounded Y the delta winding will remain closed throughout the zero sequence test. So single phase voltage will be applied without exceeding the rating of any of the windings, you know, meaning voltage or current. Sometimes the current, as probably have seen uh, from previous videos, the current went up, you know, like it went quickly to 300 amps, you know. That's why, and keep in mind, when uh, doing zero sequence tests, uh, manufacturers sometimes they ca they cannot uh, go to up to the current they they could apply because they will do their calculation and they will minimize the current you know say like uh, for instance the 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 winding is rated say like low voltage is wind is rated 1200 amps say like to do the zero sequence test they can apply up to 400 amps or something you know something like that but because they they don't want to run the risk of over exciting the core and causing overheating and damage to the transformer they will only apply say like 200 amps or something lower than that unfortunately in doing that um, you do not get the true zero sequence impedance value because you know the positive sequence impedance if you apply voltage so if you have voltage and current it's kind of linear you don't have to so for positive sequence impedance you do not have to apply like the rated voltage and uh, kind of the equivalent current you know to get the impedance it's linear you know so there's a linear ship a linear uh, relationship between voltage and current in terms of impedance and that's because you have but you know the 
the positive sequence the impedance is measured the leak it's kind of like due to the leakage flux that you know we have you know when you think about it you have two windings the high voltage for instance and low voltage and the the flux that's caused or uh, induced by the high voltage winding for instance some of it will leak will link the low voltage winding through the core obviously but some of that flux will not make it to the low voltage so that's leakage flux and the same thing with low voltage so that's the impedance basically so so the impedance kind of is the leakage is due to the leakage flux and since between the high voltage and low voltage there is a gap there is no magnetic uh, path you know so it's so that's why there's a linear relationship between the voltage and current when it comes to positive sequence impedance however for for zero sequence impedance the relationship is not linear that's because because of so many factors you know so just keep in mind that the the positive sequence impedance you know there is a linear relationship between voltage and current the zero sequence impedance there is there is no linear relationship you cannot say if i apply for instance 500 volts you know i'm gonna get so many amps you know so so this here if positive sequence impedance is five percent for instance you know if i apply you know like say x amps sorry x volts x number of volts i can i know what the current would be based on this because it does not change you know because it's linear if you know voltage and impedance you can figure out the current if you know and vice versa however however with zero sequence impedance you cannot if you calculate zero sequence impedance is you know you know 10 percent or 50 or whatever if say you apply 500 volts for instance you cannot say this is what the current will be because the current will change because the relationship is not linear when it comes to zero sequence impedance so single phase just as just a reminder single phase voltage only applied to wind is with grounded y so in this case since the high side is a delta we will not apply any test to the delta so apply single phase voltage to low voltage windings so in this case 12 so the high side is 34 kV low side is 12 kV all three low voltage windings so that's what I'm doing here are shorted high voltage windings delta terminals are not shorted so so the measured voltage is 11.97 volts current is 31.21 amps so this is the equation you can calculate the zero sequence impedance in ohms per phase three times measured voltage divided by measured current three times voltage and here's current so it's 1.1506 ohms per phase then here's the equation i can calculate the zero sequence impedance in percent so I'm applying voltage to the 12 kV side. That's why I'm calculating the rate of current and it has to be line to neutral. And here's the base MVA to calculate the current. Then to calculate the zero sequence impedance, I just plug the numbers and I get 8.79%. So So if I go back to the model, so the high side, which is a 34 kV, you have the winding, but because it has no neutral or ground, 
it's open here and here's here's a y side so here's the x so from x to the y that's the zero sequence impedance so this is just a quick kind of reminder so if you have a delta and a y and you have say the ground is here because you see the delta it has no ground it has no neutral that's ground so there is no physical connection so let's say these lines these are power lines are connected they're going to a substation somehow this phase here is faulted to ground like a tree falls on this phase and it causes a path to ground because this is ground so basically current will flow through here so basically i'm just saying if these are three units then three units will flow through the neutral then one then that three units one unit will go through here another unit through here through each phase basically since there is no connection through ground to the delta the delta will not be impacted so that's it for this video and if you want to watch more videos you can go to engineering simple Thank you and have a great day.